you will own nothing and be happy. Spy games, football games, video games. This is international law as a weapon yep. orchestrated by spy entities. And sure enough, win or lose, it's the Taylor Swift NFL season. Gamers need to get comfortable with not owning video games. That sounds a lot like the promise of communism. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Culture Contrarian podcast with Thomas Sterling and Andrew. Hello. Hey, everybody. Uh, today, we've got kind of a medley for you. We think you'll like it. Uh, we're going to be talking about spy games, kind of an update from last week. We're going to be talking about football games, Super Bowl's coming up, and we're going to be talking about video games, always a classic. Andrew, I think you have an update for us on our topic from last week. Do you want to dive straight into that? Sure, we can. So, Dr. K, the famous boogie-woogie YouTube piano guy yeah. who was confronted by a bunch of Chinese nationals who were doing a TV spot for their Chinese New Year. They had CCP uh, Chinese flags yeah, yeah. and confronted Dr. K and said, "Don't you can't have us on film. And he said, hey, it's a free country. And there's a whole confrontation. Blew up. It turns out, according to uh, China Insider, I believe is the YouTube channel and some other sources that in the background, one of the people present, and this may explain why they had this altercation with Dr. K, yeah. happens to be a senior uh, CCP spy. Oh. Um, the name is Christine Lee, and she's seen, there's, there are... Um, she got name dropped by MI5, right? She did. In fact, uh, th she is... Or, Either she or a CCP are trying to sue MI5 for defamation mm -hmm. for that purpose. And then also they're threatening to sue Dr. K. Of course they are. And, and so it's like, okay, you're literally using law as a weapon here. This mm -hmm. is international law as a weapon yeah. uh, orchestrated by spy entities. And this is what China is doing against a guy playing the piano in a London train station yeah so our updated theory is what christine lee was with this group of chinese nationals yes. she saw the camera was like i can't be on the camera mm -hmm. go shut him down that is what we're thinking okay all right yeah. that that makes sense to me that's kind of what i yeah. along the lines yeah. of what i was assuming from the beginning and christine lee has been spotted there there's a bunch of uh, photographs of her at high-ranking chinese events including with xi jinping himself okay so mm -hmm. it's is it yeah isn't she all, um, a lawyer in the UK? I yeah, don't know. I, I think that's what I saw in yeah. our yeah. research, yes. Yeah. Uh, so. That she is a lawyer in the UK as well. So I, it's still an ongoing story. We might end up having to talk about it a, a few more times, depending on what happens. I think Dr. K is going to be going on some more news shows yeah. in the coming days and weeks. And then if there's a legal action, you know, I think this is really an important story to follow. Yeah. And, and I think that, kind of this this update reinforces the fact that he did the right thing he did the he, right he thing he did what he should have done in that situation agreed yeah uh i did watch a video update from him from this morning or from six hours ago i don't know what time it was there uh and uh he the whole time it was i don't remember what he was talking about but he was holding the winnie the pooh doll <laughs> <laughs> which if you don't know what that is starting in like 2013 xi jinping started getting compared to winnie the pooh mm -hmm. and a couple of years later the, they started cracking down on that just because they don't want any jokes about Xi Jinping pretty much as far as I can tell. Yeah, uh, And so, of course, as soon as you try to crack down on something like that, it blows up and gains a life of its oh, own. Yeah. So now it is Xi Winnie the Pooh Jinping. Yeah. Like that's his name now. Indeed. And if you have an image like that or like a prop or utilize it anywhere, a meme, whatever in your content, mm -hmm. it's going to get firewall banned in China. Right. So then that message, whatever you're trying to say, can't not be twisted in yeah. China, which if that's not the case. And I heard reports that they did twist some of the Dr. K footage uh, in China. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly how, but they, well, we covered a little bit of that last week where, you know, they had made his voice deeper and slower. And made well, that's scarier. yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But they can't twist it if there is a, a prohibited image in it. So yeah. 
And just remember, yeah. I think I said this last week, but if you ever want to win a video game against a bunch of Chinese people <laughs> online, just type Tiananmen Square 1989 and they'll have to log off. Yep. <laughs> what? Well, Pro tip. I mean, I'm wondering now, where's our Winnie the Pooh doll? Yeah, that is. Oh, yeah. Uh, or stuffed well, animal. Or, I don't know. Sure. Bring it on, G. You know, like <laughs> we could use the publicity. <laughs> <laughs> I would be famous in China for want, all the wrong I reasons. I don't know if I want my words twisted out of context, you know. No. Okay. Missing context. <laughs> if you think you can twist my words out of context, I'll just say something more outrageous. So, you know. Indeed. <laughs> so you can't win. In other words, there's no need to twist your words. Out right. Of I'll context. do it for you. All right. <laughs> All Next right. week we'll have a Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, so, so that's the spy games. Uh, On to football games, because of course the thing that happened this past weekend, it's February first right now, is the the Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl. They're not the Super Bowl hasn't happened yet, but they beat the Ravens and advanced into the Super Bowl. So it's going to be Chiefs 49ers. and of course the story this whole year, as we said way back in like September or whatever it was. Nope, 23. Yeah, is that Taylor Swift is dating Travis Kelsey and that's going to be the story of this season. And sure enough. It has been. Win or lose, it's the Taylor Swift NFL season. That's what it is. Who's yeah. doing the halftime show? I think it's the Usher. Usher. I'm- <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you kind of have to feel bad. Like any artist at that Super Bowl is going to yeah. be like, how do I get Taylor to come down here? Because otherwise I'm going to be upstaged by someone who's not even performing. Yeah. Or all the Swifties that have tuned in to watch the game are going to be turned know, on to Usher. Maybe. Yeah, it could be. It could be. So, you know, so, positive spin to this. Yeah. So the big story right now about Taylor Swift and the Super Bowl, you'd think Taylor Swift and the Super Bowl, that's enough of a story. But this other story has come down the pike just like a, a that rolling boulder in Indiana Jones. It's just huge. Is that MAGA apparently has gone to war with Taylor Swift. I don't know about you guys, but I think of myself as, as like MAGA adjacent and I don't, I'm not at war with Taylor Swift over this whole thing. I don't know anyone else who is. Well, is what's the purpose for that? So I've heard that the Biden administration is seeking to, or allegedly is seeking to jump on the Taylor train Mm -hmm. as it were, and use her as a bullhorn pretty much. Yeah, and that's kind of like the worst fear. It's like the the line is Taylor Swift is a psyop, and the point <laughs> is uh, after the Super Bowl, if the Chiefs win, which they will because it's all scripted, Travis will propose to Taylor or something, and then she'll say they'll both say vote for Joe Biden or something like that. And that's like <laughs> that's the crazy conspiracy theory. And I don't know anyone who actually believes this. Yeah, but the the like one aspect of it, the joke about the NFL being scripted, that's an old joke. Yeah, like that's not new. People were saying the Ravens were going to win because the colors for this year's Super Bowl logo match the Ravens with the 49ers. So they're like, okay, so they've already told us, you know, they scripted it. The Ravens advance and so did the 49ers. Turns out the Chiefs did. So there's a football Illuminati. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, this is ridiculous on so many different levels. A, we Swift endorsed Biden back in 2020. Yeah. I mean, this is not new. And look, I mean... I, I don't think you can make the argument that because Taylor Swift endorsed him, he won. I think that yeah. would be a, uh, we We've a tall listened order. to and watched and talked a lot about what happened in 2020. And, you know, at the top of our list of why Trump lost in 2020, we <laughs> never Swift. wrote Taylor Swift. No. Uh, it never yeah. happened. Yeah. And I, I guess they put out a poll regarding this conspiracy theory to see how probable if some if t- if voters learn that Taylor Swift was endorsing Biden, what percentage of them would vote now for Biden because she endorsed him. And the poll said 18%. Yeah. But the poll also showed that 17% would not vote for him if she did that. So, yeah. so a net of 1% <laughs> more people will vote for Joe Biden because Taylor Swift, Swift endorsed him. Yeah. Great. Generally, yeah. I mean, endorsements, hopefully most people aren't voting just because their favorite celebrity said, I'm voting for this guy. But I have bad news for you, Thomas. I don't think most. I think there's some people that will, but I think most people aren't just limit, limiting their vote just to their favorite celebrity. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not most people. Maybe the aggregate, though. Yeah. I think the one... The actually, aggregate you know, of we've, their We've talked about how fast this is. story hit and just was seemingly mainstream news everywhere. Right. That's My what theory is it's not from the Biden camp or some other... Or the DNC or or some other group. 
my theory is it's the Chinese. Okay. So I don't think Boom. we actually have expounded this. So finish your point, and then I'm going to. So I think, I think if we want to look at somebody like, hey, let's get a narrative. This is a narrative. It's easy. The MAGA people are obviously the biggest conspiracy theorists on the planet. Yeah. So we'll just throw them this conspiracy, and they'll all jump on it, and they'll you know run off with it. So it's easy to get that narrative. It's, that narrative is out there, right? It's already established. Yeah. Yeah. All you have to do is throw a little meat. And then everybody jumps on it and is like, yeah, this makes sense. So the only question is who initially threw the meat? Yeah. yeah. So so this is my kind of sub conspiracy theory about the conspiracy. Theory. Okay. So what I noticed is Monday, the story was still the Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl. It's going to be Taylor Swift's NFL season. Ha ha ha. Isn't that funny? And then it seemed to me overnight by Tuesday morning, it was MAGA's at war with Taylor Swift because they think Taylor Swift's a psyop. And I was, I was just surprised that that had gone from, oh, this is funny to MAGA's at war with Taylor Swift, just like that, it seemed to me. And so I'm wondering if the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, wrote up like a, hey, we think these stories are going to be big this week. One is Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl. So try to spin this in a way that makes MAGA look bad and then sent it off to their favored news organizations. That's my conspiracy theory. My question is... If Taylor is getting used as a conspiracy theory and she's not getting kickbacks, who's she talking to? <laughs> yeah. well, because I'd be talking to somebody. Follow the money. Sure. Yeah. Well, if I, there is money to be followed. On, on, this, on that yeah. trend, I did see this has kind of been ratioed to death on Twitter, but someone said if if Travis Kelsey wins the Super Bowl, he gets a $70,000 bonus check. Is it making sense why Taylor Swift is dating him now? Oh, come on. Everyone's, she makes more money than him. Everyone's like, yeah, the billionaire is dating the football player for the $70,000 bonus check. That makes sense. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we can go to dinner. <laughs> right. Like, like, what is that? A week of expenses for them? Yeah, probably like a day. We're, we're going to fly to Paris. Right, right. So that is that is another aspect of this. So Taylor Swift has a, this big tour. She's been, She's always touring as far as I can tell. But she has a tour date in Japan the day before the Super Bowl. So there's, of course, the time difference. So the, the, the concert ends at midnight the day before the Super Bowl, but it's actually like 8 a.m. or noon or something in our time the day before the Super Bowl. So then she has a, like a 13-hour flight. So the question is, can she make it back from Japan to Las Vegas in time for the Super Bowl? Yeah. And so people are doing the math on this, and they're, they're figuring it out. And there's a lot, of, a lot of thinking going into Taylor Swift's travel schedule. You know, it's funny on noting the whole travel thing and the schedule stuff. And th these are two people who have extremely stringent schedules. Mm -hmm. From what I've heard, Travis may not be able to attend the award ceremony for, I think it's the Grammys. Oh, no. For And she's up for like six awards or something oh, no. like that. She's going to break up with him. And he's going to lose because he just got broken up with. I wonder. <laughs> so so that's the real conspiracy yes. here. He's, yeah. She's been dating him just to be a spoiler come the Super Bowl, just so she could break so up with him and make him lose. This is all yep. the 49ers doing. Yeah, that's uh, what I've. <laughs> well, I said it from the beginning. Travis, there's going to be a whole album about you. <laughs> there, there definitely will be. Like, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yep. Well, it's the only question is, is it going to be a breakup album or is it going to be like. I found the tr the I one. I found my true love. Album. Yeah, yeah. She hasn't done lots of those yet, but she is also maybe maybe people, she's so. due. Maybe yeah. she's due. hopefully. I mean, settled down finally. Yeah. yeah, that was Ben Shapiro got asked about her, and that was his response. Was like the only problem I have with Taylor Swift at all. I'm not MAGA at war with her either. Is what he said, and he's like the only problem I have is she's 34 and acting like she's still you know 24 in her in her personal life. That's nothing to do with the Super Bowl. It's nothing to do with her being a psyop. No one believes this. It's just a headline that's gone viral. I yeah. Think. And meantime, Texas is practically declaring war. Right. Yeah. They're, so they're, what is this know, really? Look over here. Well, they rob you. You can't help but wonder <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. I, I wish we could do a whole podcast episode on Texas at the border, but I, I would definitely get arrested by the end of it. Yeah. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we've talked about the football games a little bit, the video game thing. So have you heard this statement from Ubisoft? It was about, well, essentially it's kind of like the New World Order thing, right? Yeah, so the New World Order thing is what? Can you? You will own nothing and be happy. Yeah, and they said that's by 2030, that so sounds, six years. That sounds a lot like the 
promise of communism. It yeah, is it similar. Does. Mm. It does. So the Ubisoft statement is uh, gamers need to get comfortable with not owning video games. And he, the exec who said this, says a lot about, you know, we got comfortable not owning a CD collection or a DVD collection. And let's just ask that question. Have y'all gotten comfortable not owning your video games, your CDs and your DVDs? I'm not a huge video game person anymore now that I've got kids and have no time for them. Yeah. Give so it five years. I do miss them. Yeah, maybe so. Hopefully we can come back to those. But I will say over the past few years, I have definitely transitioned into the digital space mm-hmm. of streaming, mainly because you know, I've been moving around and yeah, having those physical items is cool. There are some items that I particular favorites that I keep, but I'm pretty much all digital. And at first I balked at the idea and I hated it, but I've gotten used to it. So I'm not helping your case here, Sterling. Well, I have, I have two responses to that, but first what's your answer to the question, Thomas? I'm kind of similar. I, I would kind of expand it to books. Yeah. There are some books that I'll buy eBooks. Sure. But it's, but if I buy the eBook, it's generally purely because I just want information about it or want to read the story, but I'm not invested in like quote owning the book. I don't, I don't, I almost don't even conceive of my eBooks as like having owned the book. I Mm. just, even though technically I do have an eBook library and I own the books in the library. If I actually really want the book, I'll purchase a hard copy. That's what I do. And, and I, you know, it's on my bookshelf and then it's going to be there until something happens to it. And then who knows, probably when I'm long gone. Video games, I, I, I grew up in the era of video games where it was Nintendo and it was cartridges, and I, I think the last video game console I owned was a PlayStation. Okay, uh, so maybe so, maybe I'm the unusual. And well, and then when it comes to movies, I'm kind of like you with that. I've gotten used to the streaming and finding movies that I want to watch on yep. the streaming services, but if it's movies that I that kind of like my favorites I really want, I do invest in getting like a blue ray or Blu-ray copy of or something like that. So yeah. I do have I do have a small library of some of my favorites. Okay. Well, I have not gotten comfortable with not owning CDs, DVDs, or video games. I still have a big giant C D binder. Mm-hmm. I have a full shelf of DVDs and Blu-rays and 4K discs and I have lots of video games. But the purist i sure well you, i'm also i was raised by a man who has now been in the computer industry for 40 years and he taught me the internet is ephemeral and it could go away like that yeah uh, and so yeah, he's not wrong he's not wrong Get solar that. flare could do it well do you have i'm just curious do you have a dvd cd player yes i do i have a cd player i have a tape player i have a blu-ray player i have a 4k player what about vhs I don't have VHS. I don't have any VHSs either. Okay. You probably, my parents do have You VHS. probably grew up a little later than... Well, it was just the point where by the time I was buying my yeah, own stuff, it was too late for VHS. DVDs, but I certainly yeah. grew up watching VHSs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. My family growing up, this is just purely a nostalgia thing. But everyone who lived in this era was always jealous of us. We had a dedicated VHS rewinder. It was uh, one of those super fast ones. You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking about. That's pretty, yeah. pretty cool. So everyone coming over to our house was always like, man, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I guess the, the distinction between the two of us and you is it seems almost a volume question versus a, I guess that's the way I would put it. There's only, there, I almost appreciate a smaller, with a digital age, it's nice because I might like to access a bunch of these movies, but I'm mm-hmm. not not to the point where I want to have the physical copy where I have to haul it around if I move or something like that. Yeah. There's now there's a few that I want. And the other consideration I have, and this is more so because probably the environment I work in, I'm also suspicious of the potential that anything that's online can be changed. Yeah, yep. exactly. And so if I have it printed or if I have the, the, the DVD copy or Blu-ray copy of it, that copy that I have, that's not going to change. Yeah. The prime example I have of, the, of that is the original Star Wars trilogy, which has been changed so many times, first by George Lucas. And I don't think Disney's really done much, but they've made a change or two. But I, yeah, I grew up on the VHS copy, which was, you know, they improved a frame here or there where, you know, the camera was in frame or whatever, but they didn't, they didn't add Jabba into A New Hope and they didn't add the new songs and stuff. And so I grew up on essentially the original version. 
And so I've made very certain my whole life to maintain a copy of the original Star Wars trilogy because I don't want to yeah. watch Jedi Rocks, that yeah. weird song in Return of the Jedi. It's like having version. the original manuscripts of the Apostles. <laughs> it's almost that important. You know, it's pretty close. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the other thing is I like, I am a like a librarian at heart. Okay. So I have this desire to, you know. You're a collector. So I'm a, a well, curator. More, more a librarian, curator. I think, yeah. than collector. I think it's more about literary and I guess just literature in general. Movies are literature. Are games literature? I don't know how you would qualify that because games are kind of a new beast altogether. Video games are. You could yeah. probably, well, it's, that's probably a different question, a different topic to talk about. Yeah. 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 Talk uh, about but, but on top of all the movies and stuff, I also have for years now asked for, for on my birthdays, uh, leather bound copies of classic works of literature. Okay. So the Iliad and the Odyssey, things like that. Nice. So I just have that drive in me. So Here, yeah. I'm ne you're never going to convince me not to buy a video game that I want to own and just, just stream it and, and do that. It's never going to happen. If I want to own the video game, I need to be able to buy the video game. And if you don't give me that option, which is what it makes it sound like they're wanting to do, or you're not going to be able to buy it, you'll just be able to stream it. I'm not going to interact with you anymore. I'm not going to buy your games anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Well, based on a statement, it seems like Ubersoft is looking at, they're taking a bit of a gamble here, I think, mm -hmm. but the, they're developing their company model in a manner in which everything is going to be effectively rent based. Yeah. And so the way he's talking about it, kind of like what you were referencing, this kind of one world order kind of vision where nobody really owns anything except for the elites. Well, that is the, I guess it's kind of paranoia, but it's not paranoia if they're actually out to get you. Well, I mean, it, the, the thing where they're trying to abolish private property. Yeah. Well, they're changing. Yeah. They're, they're, you're establishing right. a new normal. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, is is that what Ubisoft is actually the reason they're doing this? I would argue probably not. I think more what they're seeing is as a business model for consistent revenue, they're seeing, well, it's kind of like the streaming services. People are willing to pay every month so they can access the TV shows or movies they want. Well, if we could just do that with the gamers and have all the gamers paying a regular monthly fee so they can access the, the games that we create and then play them, then that'll give us more of a steady revenue stream. And that seems yeah, like that's I think they're why making it's kind of business, making that They're gamble. making financial decisions, not, I don't think, decisions for the good of making artful video games. Yeah. Well, well, that's also, that, that's all, I mean, that rub between business and art has been, has sure. long existed. Yeah. Well, it can also be argued with the advancement of, games and technology and constant updates mm -hmm. and you know trying to keep it as amazing and cutting edge yeah. as possible having it on a server somewhere where we can just update it and push it out to everybody that is a strategic decision yeah i it's not a it's not a ridiculous idea and i'm not opposed to having the the playstation plus the xbox cloud gaming options where you can pay 20 bucks a month and have access to a huge library of video games because you know, if you're an up and coming video gamer, just got your first ever PlayStation 5 and you want to be able to play video games. Oh, I, I don't have $600 to buy 10 games, so I'll just pay 20 bucks and have access to those 10 games. That makes sense. I'm fine with that option. But you have to leave me the option to buy the physical thing or even the digital thing. And that's the other part of what bothered me about a statement is he makes the executive from Ubisoft made it sound like if you don't have a physical copy, you haven't purchased it like you don't own it. And as someone who has a large movie library digitally and a large audiobook library digitally, I'm not comfortable with that. If I buy something digitally and I get a receipt for it, I own it as far as I'm concerned. And if you try to change the rules on that, I'm going to get upset. And I think a yeah. lot of people will too. Well, I mean, that's where if, if it's, if you have the digital copy on your computer mm -hmm. or hard drive, I don't. Honestly, that's not how do you make a good faith distinction between that and having a copy of a book on your shelf. Right. I, th there's a problem with that to say. Now, if you're having access to the cloud and all, uh, and you're going into the cloud, I mean, that's not as clear. But if you're, it's, well, it's like, really the question of access versus ownership. Yeah, that's what that, it boils down that, to here. And so all he's trying to say, he's trying to sell 
no ownership access only. That's that's his business model that he's it, that he's hoping at least really takes off. He's predicting this is way the way it's going to go, but it, it it is a prediction. It's in effect maybe a gamble. I mean, this is a very large company, and maybe he's kind of using the bully pulpit here a little bit as a big company to kind of like, hey, this is how we also do things. But I think invariably there are going to be other companies that say, you know what? No, we still like the the system where people buy the games from us. Uh, we find that we get maybe have higher loyalty for that or something mm-hmm. else like that. It's, who knows? The well, only other yeah. thing I could see where his art, he he would, if, if I'm understanding gaming right now, which <laughs> does a huge caveat there, <laughs> but from his perspective in the way that a lot of the modern games work now, where they're constantly pumping out updates to those games, yeah. he can make the argument, well, be, the game is never, ever really finished. It's all it's always constantly in development. And so because it's constantly in development, you could make the argument you never actually ever buy the entirety of the game. You buy the beginning of the game, and then you keep getting more. Or so instead of buying it, you just buy access to this thing that we're still creating. Right, and... There's a couple of responses to that. One of those is, and this has been a complaint from gamers for a while, because of the fact that they can just push out updates after the fact, video game developers have stopped actually trying to deliver a finished product. They've stopped trying to complete their game. They're just like, just push it out right now and whatever's wrong with it will update in a week and, and you know, no problem. Or, you know, sometimes it takes months before significant changes that need to happen are made. And so it's partially they've gotten more lazy because they have that option. And the other is, there's a better way to do this. One of my favorite video games right now is called Stellaris. And they do this thing, and with all their games, developed by Paradox, where you buy the base game for whatever price, and you can find it at sale prices, so you can get it for five bucks, which is a lot cheaper than, you know, when it was initially released. But then they release, like twice a year, a DLC, which is the same pretty much as an update. They do release a free update at the same time, but then they release a DLC that you have to pay for, to get all the full content that they're releasing. Okay, I'm ignorant. What's a DLC? Downloadable content. Okay. But it just means it's it's a, a full expansion for the game that you're actually okay. buying, and it's not just a free downloadable update. So that's what you pay for. So yeah. it's, like, it's like you're paying for... Okay, I see what you're saying. So if you bought the initial game, and here's an update that you can buy to add to the video game. So you're So it's not like you're... So I'm still supporting them because I still buy the new updates, right. but it's, it's not it's not breaking my game when they release this. I can keep playing without having bought without the new having thing. to buy the update. Okay, and and they because they always release a free update to make sure everything still keeps working. Itself. Okay, so so but does the uh, the DLC does it add things that just the the free update wouldn't? Yes, yeah, every okay. time. Yeah, All that's right. the whole point of it. You know, I think it's interesting that this seems to be a push from from Ubisoft, you know, for one thing, but Mm -hmm. just like the video game community, and maybe it's a different kind of demographic than music and movies. Maybe it's more of a focused demographic as opposed to a much broader demographic. Mm -hmm. But I wonder why there hasn't been this definitive of a push in the movie space or in the music space, because you are still able to buy a physical copy of just about anything movie-related or music-related and maybe that goes back to the whole question of you know knowing the customer and the uh, whole art versus business mm-hmm. idea but i just find it fascinating that this segment is like a focus on we're going to go fully in the cloud you're never going to own it well i think the reason is actually kind of an inversion of what you were saying that Spotify already changed the music industry forever. You can still buy a physical CD, but Spotify is how everyone gets their music, right? Yeah, but they never said you're not going. You need to get used to not right, exactly. It. it happened organically. Yeah, and then it happened organically with movies as well with Netflix. And so the fact that it's not happening organically, maybe that should be a sign to you, Ubisoft, that maybe there's a reason that people want yeah. to actually own their games. Well, it's well a good point. to be fair, I don't think he's necessarily saying we're going to force this. I think he's he talks about seeing this as a potential trend and wanting to be on the front end of it. Right. But as a self-identified gamer, he he has addressed me. He said, I need to get comfortable not owning 
video you, game. I mean, right. that and is I, the headline. I'm not it's pretty with that. direct, I think. Right. And maybe maybe he regrets putting it in that kind of language. Maybe not. Maybe that's maybe he's the hey, let's put it this way. We're talking about Ubi, Ubisoft here. I mean, we're in the headlines. I mean, they're in the headlines. They're yeah. getting talked about. So in one sense, it's maybe more negatively, but in another sense, you know, now I never even heard of Ubisoft before this we started talking about this gaming stuff. Yeah, so. and and if you don't either, they are one of the top ten biggest video game developers in the world with a market cap of like seven point two billion dollars. They're a huge company. They make the Assassin's Creed video games, if that means anything to you. They're pretty cool. Yeah, they're great. I love them. The other kind of whole aspect to this is that streaming itself, it's not perfect. Like there's reasons to choose physical ownership over streaming. And and one of those reasons is, ironically, it's kind of from some double speak that came from Bob Iger not too long ago. So this past year, as we've said, Disney had a terrible year. Lots of their movies bombed. And Bob Iger was asked, you know, why did that happen? He said, well, we we were pushing our streaming so hard that we just pushed out as much content as we could. And, and that resulted in a lowering of quantity of quality. And I think that is also true, but we it's know not the, the real reason. Story. Right? It's been, I mean... That's selective. It, 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 yeah, because <laughs> the, the real reason is, of course, that Disney went woke and people don't like it. Well, yeah, he's trying to cover for the fact that Disney's lost money on their streaming service. It's just, but, it, it, but it despite was, it, the fact that it's spin and he's covering, I think right. there is a grain of truth in it. I think oh, it's no, true. Th- there they is. pushed too much content too fast to try to boost to Disney Plus, and it did lower the quality. The, Disney Plus was always going to have the trouble of it was. It was this new, it was trying to jump into the streaming world that every, everybody's now into. Obviously, Disney had Disney Channel, and so it was producing, it's been producing content mm-hmm. regularly for a long time. But any big films or anything like that, they take years to develop and put together and all that stuff. So it doesn't happen that rapidly. And so when you first, I mean, we first, I first got Disney Plus streaming, I no longer have it out of protest, but I first yeah. got it primarily honestly for the for the uh, movie library that they had from because Disney does all have the Disney a, classics yeah. all the Disney classics were there available and it was exciting to to be able to access those again because I didn't own any of them and yeah then they started their streaming to enter the to the regular production of shows that other streaming services do obviously and I I think they had some hits but they had a lot of misses I think the reason they had a lot of misses that we've talked about ad nauseum is because they have embraced a worldview that most of Americans find abhorrent. Which is that white supremacy is the biggest danger on earth. Oh, yeah. Well, this this whole woke stuff. Yeah. It's just people are sick sick to death of it. And y- when you try to force feed that on an audience, then an audience quickly dwindles. And I think that's what happened with Disney. So that's probably a significant factor that Iger is never going to admit in the in the situation that they're in, but it is true too. Yeah, you're when you're trying to compete against others who are producing product. If your product isn't better or as exciting to to the to the consumer, or if it's just not worth watching, yeah, that's what I mean. Then consumers go elsewhere, and uh, you're not selling your product. And if you're not selling your product, guess what? Your company goes under. Yeah, so that's part of why I'm so opposed to to video games going to primarily or only streaming as the the mode of releasing video games is because i do think that's gonna i I suspect it would inevitably lower quality but it's also it's kind of chasing the money in a way that reminds me of mobile gaming just going back to 2018 this whole situation with ubisoft reminds me of the situation from 2018 where blizzard another big video game development company had this video that went viral of a moment from their BlizzCon where they had announced we're going to have a new Diablo game. It's a very, very big video game franchise. They sold it as if you like Diablo and Diablo 2, you'll love this new announcement we have. And the new announcement was a mobile game. Man. And the <laughs> audience actively booed them yeah. on stage. Yeah. You could see their faces like, crap, what do we do? Yeah. And so this guy responds, do you guys not have phones? <laughs> and that's not the problem. It's not access that's the problem. The problem is that mobile video gaming is not innovative and it doesn't yeah. actually deliver a quality product because it's full of ads. It's full of ads, which is a great way to make money, and it's full of microtransactions. Another way to great another great way to make money. So they don't need to make the game good. They just have to make they just have to put enough incentive for you to buy the microtransaction or watch the ad. And then they're done. That's all they really have to do. 
And so we we looked through the top 20 paid video games on on Google Play games right now. And almost all of them are like a decade old. Mobile ones. Mobile games. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So like clearly there's nothing happening here. They're making lots of money, but it's not interesting if you're a gamer. Yeah. Why are they making money? (laughs) Well, I mean, I really think what Ubisoft is doing here is it's it's trying he's trying to navigate the future not really knowing what the future is but projecting it and almost this is kind of interesting i mean is he is in one sense you want everyone doing the same thing and then you compete against them in that yeah it's harder when you're having you're in the same sphere but not everybody's doing it the same way and it could potentially derail the direction or the manner in which you're doing it Let's just take Blockbuster Video as an example. When Netflix came on the scene, if I'm remembering it correctly, didn't they go to Blockbuster and offer them? They did. did. And Blockbuster Blockbuster couldn't see it. It made the worst decision ever. (laughs) They couldn't see it, right? They said, that's not going anywhere. And now there's like maybe one Blockbuster left. I think the one in in Oregon. Alaska or something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, (laughs) so I'm wondering if this is a little bit of that occurring but in the on the other end they're they're trying to get out ahead and say this is where we think this is going but almost trying to make it happen and by saying well this is almost if you kind of look at his words it's almost like this is inevitable right and no it's not inevitable this is this is what you think and this is the direction it appears you're going to take your company in and you're going to make games but guess what there's a bunch of other people making games what you're going to have to do is try to convince all these people making games to not sell their games and just rent them the way you're renting it. And then in that competition sphere, then you'll be kind of top dog or you'll be because you've entered it first or something along those lines. But as soon as somebody says, you know what, I found a, a niche that's pretty large of people that want to actually buy the games and I'm, you know, producing these games and other, maybe other people are coming in they're saying, Hey, that's working for us. We're going to do that. That could end up derailing this whole idea. Now, I don't think it's going to go one way or the other necessarily. I think there is a probably a lane for people who would say, I'm totally fine with renting access to a whole well, library of games and playing it. That is my fear. That is my fear that this Ubisoft executive is going to get his way. And if I want to play the new video games in 2028, I won't be able to buy them. And so that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm so on fire about this because I well, don't want that to happen. Just make sure you own your ones you have now. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, just, there's a lot of games out there. It's true. There are, <laughs> there's an awful, there's probably awful more games life. out there than you could spend your lifetime playing right I'm now. I'm certain that's the case. So just fill up that library. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think, I think that's, we've covered our topics, right? Any, did we yeah. leave anything out? No, no. We talked about spy games. Spy games with Dr. K and the fact that yeah. it was what it looked like. And it was the CCP trying to control British citizens on British soil. We and talked about Taylor Swift. Football games. Football games. And, and, and Travis Kelsey. We really should be including him. He's but the and. <laughs> despite the fact that he's possibly the greatest tight end of all time, <laughs> playing for one of the best football the teams one. in the nation. Yeah. He's yeah. an and when the person you're talking about is Taylor Swift. And <sighs> she's just that, that big of a pop star. Remarkable. Yeah. We talked about Ubisoft and we talked about this, this statement that we've gone over and you will own nothing and be happy. Right. And streaming and all that. So when has that ever worked? Owning nothing and being happy about it. I'm it's, pretty sure the fish are pretty well, happy. No, I mean, it, 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 it's a complete denial of the nature of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a denial of your right to defend your, it's to, to, to defend what you have, right? That's what it's denying. Ultimately, mm. it's like you have no right to tell someone else they can't use something. And so the only way we can achieve that is by eliminating private property. Bad idea. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, this has been the Pop Culture Contrarian podcast with Thomas Sterling and Andrew. We are brought to you by the Patriot Post, which is the oldest conservative online news digest. It's right. It's free. Be sure to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>